The following program is an opinion program. The opinions expressed by the hosts and guests of this program are not the opinions of the management, staff, and advertisers of this station. Please direct all criticism, concern, and adulation to the hosts of this program. Welcome to Alabama Politics. This week, I am Dale Jackson. I'm a radio talk show host. You can hear my show Monday through Friday from 5 to 9 a.m. on WVNN in Huntsville and on Talk 99.5 in Birmingham from 10 until noon. With me, as always, Mecca Music. She is the CEO of 256today.com. Smart news for smart people, so check them out. Uh, today, we got a great show for you today. Lots going on in the state of Alabama. The debt ceiling is still a thing uh, as well, or is it? Stay tuned uh, for that. Jeff Poor will be with us uh, from a talk station down in uh, Mobile that carries this very program. And I've got a parting shot for you that I forgot what it is right now, but we'll figure it out uh, <laughs> by the end of the show. So for right now, let's get started. Let's get to the two-minute warning. All right, uh, the debt ceiling. Let, let's talk about this thing for a second. Uh, there's always these conversations about who won and who this and who that. And it's, uh, I think it's pretty obvious here. Joe Biden started from a position of saying there will be no negotiations. You will agree to a, a clean debt ceiling increase uh, of $4 trillion and you will like it. And, and then we watched as they set out to kind of make that a reality. And well, Kevin McCarthy said, no, I'm not going to do that. So we sat there. Uh, for a couple months and then in the last week there's been actual negotiations and they have come up with an agreement uh, they will raise the debt ceiling for roughly two years to get us past uh, the next election uh, there will be some caps on spending except for military spending which can go bananas as usual uh, and then uh, everyone will be happy for at least two more years and then we will have the same pointless conversation then uh, and go through the same rigmarole again who won both sides are huh. claiming victory. Okay. They, the both sides are claiming victory, and they do. They both sides have something. I thought you were going to say both sides won. I was like, ah, oh, that guy, come on. No, 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 no. Okay. Both sides are claiming victory, sure. though. And both sides have reasons to be happy and reasons to be upset. Um, I think, though, Biden is strongly saying that this is a win. MSNBC is saying this is a win for him. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's. I, I think nobody came out to, to tarnish. I, I think the fact that he started from this position of I'm not going to move at all. Well, that's Coming nobody off. believes that. Right. So he, that was either a ploy, obviously, or, or he just failed there. But and then that's the other side saying, well, he said he was not going to do anything. Right. And now he did. I, I think it's interesting because you're watching both sides claim, oh, this is terrible. It's awful. It's no good. But at the same time, you know, they're behind the scenes. Oh, yeah. They were behind the scenes oh, yeah. figuring out whether or not they had enough votes to get this thing over the finish line. Byron Donald said it best before the vote. He said, I don't like it but I don't want to default. It's like, okay, and? And then it's like, so then what? You know, and, and well, but that gives them all the out. That gives course. them all the out. And, and I mean, that's basically what it is. But I think everybody got a little bit of something they wanted. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I mean, it was a negotiation. Mm -hmm. uh, who won the deal? I, I don't know. We all lost, let's put it that way. <laughs> all right, uh, let's talk uh, about schools here for a second. Is Tupperville even wrong? I mean, I, I know it's fun to, to listen to Tommy Tupperville speak and then everyone go, I can't believe he said such a thing. And then go look at the school rankings uh, for Alabama's inner cities and go, can they read? Because basically uh, what he said is you have problems in the schools. And he took a shot at the educators. He was speaking directly about Baltimore City schools in the conversation. And they had some famously bad situations in their school system. Some, some schools had zero kids reading at grade level. That's a real problem. Um, to say our current education system is good enough for everyone is a false statement. That's what Tuberville's getting at. But Tuberville speaks in these statements that are very easily used against him. But is it being used against him? Yes. Them? Who's voting for him? Oh, no, I, I get it. it yeah. I'm not trying to argue that it's not good politics for him to call all these people out and stuff like this. Because you're I, known by your enemies, right? That's exactly what I was saying. So the people coming for Tupperville, because we've talked about this, and I'd be like, man, he's Tupperville, he's, he's got to be smarter. He's got to be. I'm starting to rethink this. This is part of the Tupperville strategy, maybe. I, I, I'm not sure that's necessarily the case. I, I think he, he absolutely believes the things he's saying. Uh, so I, I think that's it. And, and the attempt, oh, he's a white nationalist. No, he's not. Oh, he's already, no, he's not. Oh, he hates teachers. No, he doesn't. And it gets to this point where everyone just kind of rolls their eyes. And like you said, you know yourself by your enemies. If you're being attacked all the time, it's, it's kind of like the Chick-fil-A boycott situation. I, I said, look, you can boycott every little thing that pops up and then people are going to stop listening to you. Right. And on this Tupperville thing, I think people have stopped listening to them when they're like, oh, he's a monster. And it's like, 
Yeah, but is he? Because I look at Birmingham City Schools and uh, less than 30 percent uh, of the kids there are reading and writing at grade level across the board. You can't call that a success. So Tuberville might be being inartful, but he's correct. And, and that's sort of what I think is irritating. But it a makes lot of the easy headlines that oh, oh, yeah. Tuberville's coming, criticizing teachers, our heroes, you know. I mean, came on a soil. That's like criticizing firemen. You can't do that. Well, if the fireman is like burning down houses and only putting <laughs> out 30% of them, uh, then maybe we should be going after uh, the firemen. Uh, they've gotten a free ride for too long. All right, uh, let's move on and, and talk a little bit uh, about taxes in the state of Alabama. They did it. They've come up with the agreement. We talked about this whole time, and they did it. Golly gee, they got it done. How impressive. They, I mean, yeah, it's less than they said it was going to be all the way around, both the tax cut uh, on the groceries and uh, the rebate. Uh, yes, but they did it. So that's the thing they're going to hang their hat on in this legislative session. And I'm kind of irritated by all the other things that they did not do uh, this legislative session. And we can run through a list of them right now if you want me to. Uh, but they are school choice. Uh, they're the issue with the drag ban uh, on kids. Uh, there's all these other issues that, that were easy layups. I did a video at yellowhammernews.com uh, about that. There were a lot of easy layups that they missed. And I think they grinded this out with the rebate and the taxes in, in order to be like, <laughs> That darn calendar again, which was what I said from the very beginning of the session, too. Okay, I know you were blaming the calendar from the very beginning. I'm not blaming the calendar. No, but you were they're saying they the would blame the calendar from the doing, very beginning, right? Which they did. But, <laughs> which they did. But I, I believe there was true debate on this, if you remember. And I, I, hey, I think everybody gets, you know, the who won question from the dead ceiling. I think on this, everybody gets the claim victory on this, too. Ivy, she did not get the $400 rebate amounts, but she did get a significant number. Um, and then the people who are against such higher high amounts got to come back and be like, oh, well, we got it back to a reasonable number. There is movement on the grocery tax. I mean, I, I think I think you should be happy. I am happy. Don't get me wrong. I mean, I, I, I even put an exclamation point there. Like, they yeah, did it. But exactly. I, it's also like a question mark as well. So I, I'm happy that they did it. I'm unhappy with the fact that it took all the energy out of the room and, and they didn't focus on some of these other easy layups that you, they they decided that they weren't going to. You mean the deliberate choice to eat up time on the clock? Yes. To not do the things that you want them to do? And then look at the calendar and cry. Yeah. Yes, the calendar. Yeah. Yes, the calendar. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so, so this time isn't I, your first radio. No, I, I feel like I called this from the very beginning. Of you this. did. Go back and check the tapes. All right. Uh, let's talk about the Space Command, uh, which is never, ever going to end. Now we're going to have investigations. Uh, in Congress, uh, where we will be looking at uh, how they made this decision, why they made this decision, and why they haven't made an end decision on this, uh, and how is it that the place that came in like fifth on most places is now making the most noise uh, about possibly getting it. Uh, you, you can go back and look at how it was originally done. There were reports and studies done looking into whether or not Donald Trump put his hand on the uh, scale here, apparently, based on the early reports uh, done during the Biden administration. The answer to that is no. But now here we are still having a debate about where this thing is going to go. And, and the thing is not even a debate because Joe Biden can at any time just say Colorado. They're already moving dirt there. They're leasing office space. I talked to James Lomax about this, the state representative today or, or this week, had this conversation with him. They're making moves in Colorado. The only way this is going to end is if they two ways. Biden's out of office or he just makes the decision and says go to Colorado. Huntsville's gotten screwed here. Not, it's not necessarily over, I, I would just like to say. And okay. the last time we talked about this, um, I was told uh, that it's not a foregone conclusion, as you had said, and this is very much not over, and it's certainly not a done deal that Colorado's going to get in. Well, I, I, I hope you're right. I don't think you are, uh, but I, I hope you are correct. And, and I think what you're seeing with like Mike Rogers and mm -hmm. Dale Strong and, and the uh, Armed Services Committee in the House and the investigation, all of that is good, but... What is it also? It's a way for them to say, whoa, 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 whoa. You, you, you can't appoint it right now. We've got this investigation going on. And I think they launched it because I think they thought he was going to pull the trigger. Huh. That's what I think. And, and I'm not I saying it's a bad it. move. It's a good move. It's a good, it's a good way to use their system. But I think that they have made the decision in the, in the Biden administration uh, to make this move. And now they're just going to try to figure out how to, how to square away the, the, uh, the fallout. So we'll see where it all goes. 
Uh, but I think that's exactly uh, where this is headed. Uh, Jeff Poor will be with us next. Uh, he is a talk show host uh, down in Mobile. We'll talk with him. Stay tuned. You're watching and listening to Alabama Politics this week. You work hard to earn little escapes because doing your best means being your best. So let us help you discover your best at Premier Dental Spa. With our unique blend of cosmetic dental and spa-like aesthetic services, you'll leave feeling relaxed, refreshed, and renewed. Make sure the best you is here to stay and book your appointment online today at premierdentalspa.com. Hey folks, Dale Jackson here for my friends at University Kia. Now look, I love Kias. I've driven plenty of them. I used to have a Kia Sportage. When my son was born, my wife said, no, no, we got to get ourselves one of these big SUVs. The Telluride from University Kia is an absolutely amazing vehicle. You get it at a great price, but you get everything at University Kia at a great price. Learn more about it today. Head on over to universitykia.com. Find the perfect vehicle for you. New and pre-owned. They got it for you. Universitykia.com. Want fun, safe, intelligent fitness programming? Want to build muscular strength, cardiovascular endurance, drastically improve range of motion and mobility, and learn proper nutrition to fuel your life with energy and emotional health? Well, come find out why Iron Tribe Fitness is ranked one of the top five fitness programs in America. Come find out why personal training and intentionally working on your current movement patterns individually is not only important, it's just another core value that separates Iron Tribe Fitness from other fitness facilities. To learn how to get your two week free pass, go to irontribefitness.com. Hey folks, Dale Jackson here, and this is my son, Grant. Now, I'm here to talk to you about Top Shelf Customize Cleaning. He's a handful, I'm a handful, and if I want to stay married, I need Top Shelf Customize Cleaning to come and take care of my house. They do an amazing job for me, and they'll do an amazing job for you. Cindy loves them, I love them, Grant loves them as well. Check them out on Facebook, Top Shelf Customize Cleaning. And don't forget, call them today, 256-417-9122. And when you talk to them, make sure you tell them Grant sent you. Here's a great way to save money on your prescription medications. If you take Viagra or Cialis, we can give you a way to pay as little as $2 a pill. Compare that to prices as high as $60 per tablet. Call now with your prescription and pay as little as $2 a pill. We offer 24-7 service and always free delivery and confidential packaging. Call Pharmacy Shop 24-7 to get generic versions of Viagra or Cialis for as little as $2 a pill, plus free discreet shipping. Do you have a car sitting around you want to get rid of? Well, here's a great idea. Donate your car now to help local veterans in your area. Yes, just make one fast call to the Veteran Car Donation Program. Within a few days, we'll come and remove your car for free. You can donate any car in any condition. We'll use our vast network to sell it. The proceeds raised go to help local veterans and their families. And you get a tax deduction. And all you need to do is make this free call. Clean your yard up, get rid of an old car, and help the vets. We make it easy. Make this free call now. Book your fast and easy pickup. Call the Veteran Car Donation Program now. Welcome back to Alabama Politics This Week. I am Dale Jackson. With me, as always, Mecca Music. And our guest this week, a talk show host from FM Talk 106.5 uh, FM, down in Mobile, Jeff Poor. He is also with 1819 News. He is a busy, busy guy, and we appreciate him joining us. Uh, he spent some time in the State House this week. Now, look, uh, Jeff, just for the audience's information, this week, the only stuff we were able to ever see come up were things that were already passed through one chamber already. There was no time to just put new stuff in and say, okay, now we've got everything out of the way and we got enough time on the calendar, we're gonna start hammering away on some of these other issues that we haven't got passed yet. This is just cleanup time, right? Yeah, it's kind of uh, amazing how that, that time typically falls right about the time the budgets are passed. So they say, okay, nothing new can come so we can go ahead and pass these budgets and then uh, we'll just let the chips fall where they may. Is, is there a potential for a bill that could ever go before the legislature that says give them 31 days? 
or, or 35 days or 40 days? I mean, no, is, it, it would take a constitutional amendment. So, I mean, a bill could come up, but it would require a vote of the people because by uh, the, the Constitution sets the parameters of the legislative session. Now, the governor call, obviously could call a legislative session, a special session, and they've tried to change this before, Dale, where they said uh, where they, the legislature could call themselves into session, mm -hmm. but they got a lot of pushback from the governor. Now, Jeff, I want you to consider the rebates, consider the grocery tax, and grade the legislature from an A to an F on these efforts. C. Uh, I don't know. We didn't really have a lot of expectations. All we knew from Governor Ivey was we're going to do something big on education, so we're going to get those economic incentives passed. We got one of the two done. The uh, legislature did get some things done. They will tell you, because typically, guys, that first year of that quadrennium is when you want to watch for big things. There was no sizzle to this session. Not that that necessarily won a lot of sizzle because the, the, that's when the gas tax passed that first year in the last mm -hmm. quadrennium. But but I, I just they, they have a Republican supermajority and a Republican governor, and it just seems like there's they just don't do much with it. Well, they they do maintain the decorum of, of those chambers because they don't want to filibuster and shut or shut down people's filibusters. Uh, that's what I heard this week is like, well, we got to worry about the decorum. And I was like, yes, I understand. You want to clear the way for members to stand up on the floor and call other members the N word. I know that if that's what you want to do. You want that to happen because you don't want to shut people down. And if you think I'm being facetious, uh, Google it and go look it up and see what happened this session. Jeff, why don't they ever shut them down? If they talk everything death uh, on the left, on the Democratic side of the aisle, you, you mentioned the Republican supermajority. Why don't they shut them down? Well, they started to shut it down in the House, and that's where the Wadalika Gavan inward incident occurred. But the the, the upper chamber, the, there's a there's a fear. I mean, uh, well, what if we're not in power today? Which I don't know when that day would ever come. But that you know that that these uh, just a few senators can really derail the Senate's business and just upset the Senate committees, everything, and they, they can cloture them. But they would have to get through a cloture vote every single time. And that, I guess, to them is too much of a struggle. Let Roger Smitherman and Bobby Singleton uh, go on for hours and hours with their filibuster. And I, 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 the Senate's curious to me. They should be steamrolling them upstairs because the Democrats, when they were in charge prior to 2010, steamrolled the Republicans. So I, 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 don't, I don't necessarily understand it, why the leadership in the Senate is not more aggressive with those guys. Well, I mean, you also have to consider, though, these people work together, okay? These men and women work together. They are work colleagues. And so there are relationships that are formed. And just because you're a Democrat and Republican doesn't necessarily mean that you are going to steamroll uh, well, your me, friend across the aisle. Mecca, let me push back on that because they're, they're not there to work together. They're there to represent their constituents to vote for. Absolutely, they're but to there. get things done, many would argue well, that you need that, that you do need to extend that courtesy. Let, let me just say this, Jeff. Before you continue, I'll, I'll, just, let me, I'll just add this. I, I agree with the, the idea that you got to get stuff done, but what they're doing now is not getting stuff done. Like they're literally. They're and, using, and I go ahead, Jeff. They're using that as an excuse yeah. not to get stuff done. They, they, they could get stuff done if they wanted to. They could if they wanted to, and they would if they wanted to steamroll these guys. They don't want to steamroll these guys. That's the point. But they could, and they're not representing their constituents that elect Republican, a Republican supermajority to the legislature, they're using that as an excuse. That's been going on for years and years and years. So yeah, sure, they gotta work together, but I'm telling you, Mecca, they used to do this when the Democrats were in charge, and this is all the way up until 2010, used to steamroll the Republicans, and all you've got out of everybody else is just a shrug, whatever. Oh, I absolutely do remember that. But also, you've gotta remember um, the calendar, you know, the majority, the super majority uh, might have wanted the calendar to be eaten up. Yes, if you that's, remember that's this. exactly so right. I, I there's really that. no reason to yeah. steamroll your colleague at that point. So, Jeff, th that was the question I was going to ask. Uh, thank you, Mecca, because Mecca, I think, has it here. Intentional. Like, like, OK, yeah, eat up all this time. And then two days before we're going to pass this budget. And then, you know what? I got a cocktail party to go to. But, you know, <laughs> the, that, that sort of stuff. I, I, is that too far off? No, it's sort of what the business community wants. A, uh, they don't want a populist, right-wing, reactionary legislature. And this is a way to get their people in, 
to control the ebb and flow of the body and keep it from passing. Anything that's too crazy that you guys, you guys who voted for Trump, you're too crazy out there. We got to be the adults for you. And that's sort of the mentality because, I mean, there's a certain uh, constituency in the state that worries that that would be bad for business. Yeah, don't let talk radio control the, the legislature. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's essentially, yes, yeah. Yes. All right, Jeff, I, I got a couple of things here I want to hit real quick. And you tell me which one of these is more likely to come back uh, next year. The Price Act, school choice. Uh, what is a woman? The, we should just call the Matt Walsh bill. Uh, they also have those, uh, what do they call the divisive concepts. Uh, bill. Uh, there were a couple of things. The, the ban on um, taking your kid to a drag show. Uh, that was out there. Which of these is more likely to come back in the next legislative session? I, I would say I think that drag show bill is going to come back and pass and, uh, and, and in the next session. I, I think Scott Stadagan is going to carry it. He's a leader. Um, I, I, I think we're still a couple of years away from school choice. And it's going to take a, another session or two. I am not bullish on that. I do not understand what happened with device and concepts. That should have been a layup, and it was more of a brick. Uh, I don't know what went wrong there. But uh, if you're asking me to bet, probably something to do with the drag show stuff will come. The question will be how much more of this stuff do we see elsewhere? If it continues, if it continues and we keep seeing videos of all this stuff, and it's happening in Alabama, I think it definitely does come back. I agree with well, you. Well, and Go I ahead, also Becca. think the school choice conversation will continue. I think it was louder than it's ever been in a, in a serious manner this session, and I think that will continue. I'm not saying it'll get passed the way Dale Jackson would have it be passed next session, but I think it, the conversation continues. And I, I also believe that as other states pass school mm -hmm. choice, resources start coming into Alabama to start dealing with it because I, I, I think that the, the push to make that happen as opposed to spreading out, if like 20 states did it, you no longer have to fight that battle in those but states. But if you can't do it during like a budget surplus, I, uh, then, you know, oh, you're going to take that money from the public schools? Yes. You know, now we can't buy basketballs. <laughs> Jeff, well, it just, go it ahead, Jeff. Last word, go ahead. It just depends on how bad the school systems are faring at this point. If they're still doing horribly 51st out of 50 or whatever, then I think you see the real clamoring for school choice. But right now, I think it's two years away. Jeff Poor, FM Talk 106.5. Thank Jeff. you very much, Jeff, for being here. Mecca is gone, so the show gets significantly better. Stay tuned. It's Alabama Politics This Week. Hey, folks, Dale Jackson here for my friends at University Kia. Now, look, I love Kias. I've driven plenty of them. I used to have a Kia Sportage. When my son was born, my wife said, no, no, we got to get ourselves one of these big SUVs. The Telluride from University Kia is an absolutely amazing vehicle. You get it at a great price, but you get everything at University Kia at a great price. Learn more about them today. Head on over to universitykia.com. Find the perfect vehicle for you. New and pre-owned. They got it for you. Universitykia.com. You work hard to earn little escapes because doing your best means being your best. So let us help you discover your best at Premier Dental Spa. With our unique blend of cosmetic dental and spa-like aesthetic services, you'll leave feeling relaxed, refreshed, and renewed. Make sure the best you is here to stay and book your appointment online today at PremierDentalSpa.com. Hey folks, Dale Jackson here, and this is my son, Grant. Now, I'm here to talk to you about Top Shelf Customize Cleaning. He's a handful, I'm a handful, and if I want to stay married, I need Top Shelf Customize Cleaning to come and take care of my house. They do an amazing job for me, and they'll do an amazing job for you. Cindy loves them, I love them, Grant loves them as well. Check them out on Facebook, Top Shelf Customize Cleaning. And don't forget, call them today, 256-417-9122. And when you talk to them, make sure you tell them Grant sent you. Want fun, safe, intelligent fitness programming? Want to build muscular strength, cardiovascular endurance, drastically improve range of motion and mobility, and learn proper nutrition to fuel your life with energy and emotional health? Well, come find out why Iron Tribe Fitness is ranked one of the top five fitness programs in America. Come find out why personal training and intentionally working on your current movement patterns individually is not only important, it's just another core value that separates Iron Tribe Fitness from other fitness facilities. To learn how to get your two week free pass, go to irontribefitness.com. Have you filed for disability benefits but were denied by the Social Security Administration? Or do you need to apply for benefits and are overwhelmed with paperwork? Are you between the ages of 50 to 63? 
and can no longer work because of an illness or injury, thousands of hardworking Americans are in your situation. They file for disability benefits every month and are unnecessarily denied their much-needed benefit check. Call now for a no-obligation, free, evaluation. We can help you nearly double your chances of approval and get your benefit checks faster. We understand the physical, emotional and financial impact and will share our insider expertise. There is a time limit to apply. We're here to help you get your disability claim filed and paid as soon as possible. Please, time is limited. So, if you are between the ages of 50 to 63 and can no longer work because of an illness or injury, call right now and let us help you file your disability claim with the Social Security Administration. Welcome back to Alabama Politics this week. I am Dale Jackson. Thank you very much. Uh, for being here. We'll get to the party shot here in just a very quick second. But first, let me tell you about the seven things you should be talking about today. You go to yellhammernews.com. You sign up for my email blast every morning. You'll get an email from me and it shows you the seven things you should be talking about uh, that day. Uh, so you can check all of that out. But for right now, let's go ahead and get to that party shot. Uh, my party shot this week, looking at the wrong camera. My party shot this week is this. You miss all the shots you don't take. Uh, the Alabama legislature has to learn this, uh, especially the more conservative members uh, of that body. Yes, I get it. They're all conservative. It's a supermajority Republican body there. Uh, but the more conservative members have been almost completely shut out uh, on a bunch of different issues. Uh, moderate things move through much quicker, obviously. But you got to take bigger swings. You got to take bigger shots because you miss all the shots you don't take. And I think there were a lot of shots this legislative session not actually taken. Some people went through the motions. But the big swings, the big shots were not taken. And you got to take those shots. Even if you lose, you got to take those shots. You got to be more public about it. You got to fight even inside your own body in order to get stuff done. And I think that's what the problem was here. But that's just my take. Thank you very much for being here and watching Alabama politics this week and listening all over the state of Alabama. We'll be back next week.